Catherine and welcome to Quiz, CETV's Quiz Show. And I'm Aaron, our statistician for this evening. Coming up we have four rounds, each with five questions, so it's time to meet the teams. On my left we have the reluctant housemates. Please introduce <laughs> yourselves and your course that you're studying. Hi, I'm Hayley and I'm studying zoology. Hi, I'm Sophie and I'm also studying zoology. Hi, I'm Amy and I'm also studying zoology. Fantastic! And what about the reluctant course mates? <laughs> Hi, I'm Dave. I'm studying English, Literature and Language. Hi, I'm Rose. I'm studying English Literature. And I'm Steph. I'm also studying English Literature. So we have Zoology versus English Literature tonight. OK, on to the first round. And this one is Current Affairs. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes. OK, question number one. How much did Cardiff spend on translation during the academic year of 2011 to 2012? <laughs> <laughs> Reluctant course mates. We think we have an answer. Is it 73,000? <coughs> Almost, but not quite. You're very, very close. So, to elected housemates? 74,000. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to award any points. The answer was £71,623. Aaron, have you got any facts? Uh, incidentally, a recent study by the Welsh Language Board identified 300,000 uh, Welsh speakers who called themselves fluent uh, in Wales, a number which is actually going down uh, as of the last few years. Fantastic. On to question number two of round one. What elections took place in the Cardiff Students' Union this week? Reluctant course mates. It wasn't something to do with a referendum, was it? It might have been. Could we be a <laughs> That's little not bit specific more enough? specific? Uh, was it um, whether Cardiff University was going to be supporting an NUS demonstration? Is that still not specific enough? I think we need a little bit more specific. I can't do any more specific. Reluctant housemates. We don't have a clue. <laughs> okay, the answer was the Ministry of Change. Yeah, it's interesting you mention that. Um, the university seems to love its bureaucracy. Uh, in the Ministry of Change positions we had the Scrutiny Committee, a University Forum, a Union Forum, a, com a Community Forum and a Services and Events Forum. And then to top it all off we have a Societies and Democracy Coordinator. So there's lots of uh, levels and uh, perhaps unnecessary groups going on there. Sounds very complicated to me. Yeah. In I'm my glad, opinion, I'm yeah. glad you're here to describe that one. Okay, no question number three. Our sabbatical officers ran the half marathon last week, <coughs> but who came first? Hmm. Have a little guess. Sabbatical officers. Do you use your buzzers as well? Mm -hmm. Do you know any sabbatical officers? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nobody got an answer. It was, in fact, Chris, the head of student media. Yeah, you ran it in um, two hours and four minutes, which, to be honest, I would take as a time. Uh, one thing I didn't know is that actually, alongside the conventional half marathon, Cardiff actually run a wheelchair half marathon as well. The winner of that race was Peter Downing, who managed the race in an hour and 35 minutes. Amazing feat, in my opinion. And question number four of round one. Which BBC show shelved a report into the late Jimmy Savile? <coughs> Panorama? It was not Panorama. Reluctant housemates. <laughs> Horizon, maybe? It was not. Unfortunately, the answer was Newsnight. Aaron? Yeah, um, many people will know that Jeremy Paxton is the current uh, anchor of Newsnight. Um, he's actually been in the post for over 20 years now, starting in 1989. Fantastic. And the last question of round one. Felix Van Gotner ran from the edge of space last week. Who was the corporate sponsor? Red Bull. Fantastic, that is the correct answer. That is the end of round one. Could we have the scores please now? Yeah, the scores on the doors are the reluctant housemates are yet to get off the mark and the reluctant course mates with ten. Fantastic. On to round two, this is our random selection uh, round by the lovely envelopes behind me. Okay, let's go to reluctant housemates first. Could you please stand up and select an envelope? Okay, so H, and this is the Twitter round. So round two of the quiz. Question number one. Who has the most followers on Twitter? Lady Gaga. That is correct. Hey. Fantastic. Nice Question two. What does hashtag FF stand for? Facebook friend. Unfortunately, it's Follow Friday. Aaron? 
Yeah, uh, Follow Friday uh, often, well, always actually abbreviated to FF is a Twitter phenomenon that happens every Friday uh, where basically people all around the world uh, suggest people to follow uh, internationally. So true or false for question number three, Justin Bieber has more followers on Twitter than Barack Obama. I'm going to go for true, but I really hope it's not. <laughs> it is indeed true. Aaron. Yeah, sorry to confirm that one. Um, Justin Bieber actually has 29.3 million followers on Twitter. Uh, to put that in comparison, Barack Obama only has 21.2 million followers. Gosh. Question number four. Who is the most followed news outlet on Twitter? Sky? It's not Sky. Collective housemates, care to have a guess? BBC World News. Unfortunately, the answer is CNN. Aaron? Yeah, um, CNN actually has 6.3 million followers on Twitter. I was quite surprised to see how many it was. To put that uh, on an international journalism perspective, uh, BBC News actually only has 1 million followers. Uh, the Middle Eastern news channel Al Jazeera, their English equivalent only has 1.3 million, so CNN is way in front uh, on the global scale there. Fantastic, that's quite shocking there. So question number five, the final question of round two. What year was Twitter established? The Reds of Housemates. Is it 2009? It's not 2009. Any ideas, reluctant course mates? For 2010? It's actually 2006. Oh. Right, that's uh, the end of round two. Over to Aaron for the scores. Yeah, not much change here actually. Uh, the reluctant housemates are now off the mark. Very glad to announce that with 10. Reluctant course mates still on 10 as well. Ooh, so an equal level. Right, and reluctant course mates, it's your turn to uh, make a letter. Go for Kev. Thank you very much. And this one is on British kings and queens. Question number one. True or false, Great Britain's first king is a Scotsman. Elected the housemates. False. It's actually true. Aaron, do we have any facts? Uh, yeah, a few. Um, king James is where we get our King James Bible from. Um, incidentally, his reign was actually the longest of any uh, Scottish king, lasting 57 years. I don't think any well, only our contemporary queen even matches that closely. Fantastic, thank you, Aaron. Question number two, what date was the queen born? I don't want to yeah. 1830? 1830? Um, it's not 1830, I'll give you half, half marks for a, um, a month. April. That's correct, mm -hmm. five marks awarded to uh, reluctant course mates. Brilliant. Aaron, any facts? Yeah, so as I just said, um, Queen Elizabeth is the only uh, contemporary monarch which matches King James remotely closely for uh, the length of reign. Uh, she served 60 years. As of this year, uh, her accession was in 1952. Brilliant. Thank you, Aaron. Question number three. Who were the first and last Tudor monarchs? First was Henry VII and the last was Elizabeth I. Fantastic. Ten points. <laughs> Do we have any facts? Yeah, uh, very quickly, the Tudor period spanned from 1485 to 1603 and we get our national flower from the Tudor crest, which was the Red Rose. Brilliant. Okay, question number four of round three. Name three of Henry VIII's wives. Anne Boleyn, Catherine of Aragon and Anne of Cleves. Fantastic. Yeah, very good. Um, there were plenty to choose from in fairness. From first laugh, we've got Catherine of Aragon, uh, Anne Boleyn, Jane Seymour, and Anne of Cleves, uh, Catherine Howard, and Catherine Pass. We've got three different Catherines there. If you ever forget uh, what happened to each of them, you can remember a simple rhyme, divorced, beheaded, died, divorced, beheaded, survived. Thank you very much. Take me back to my school days there, Aaron. Question my number pleasure. five, final question of round three. Who was the monarch depicted in the film, The King's Speech? Damn, I forgot. <laughs> it's, um, you know, no, no, George. George. The, George the. Any ideas on number? George the fifth? That is correct. <laughs> uh, yeah, very well done. Um, 
George never expected to be king. Uh, his elder brother, Edward VIII, was uh, the first in line for succession. However, he abdicated in 1936 to marry an American socialite, Wallace Simpson, and that put George as the figurehead of the country. And that brings us to the end of round three. Let's just have a recap of the scores with Aaron. Yeah, the reluctant housemates are on 30 and the reluctant course mates 35. Very close, thank you Aaron. On to round four, the final round, and it's general knowledge. Question number one. What is the fastest swimming marine mammal? Yeah, is it a sea lion? It's not a sea lion, reluctant housemates. Any ideas? Seal? It's not a seal, it's actually a killer whale. Oh. Um, I wasn't actually aware of this, but apparently the killer whale is a species of dolphin. It is the largest species of dolphin in the world, and they live on average to about 65 years old. Thanks, Aaron. Question number two. What are Alvin, Simon, and Theodore? <coughs> they are indeed. Um, yeah, you may be familiar with the Alvin and the Chipmunks films, but actually they started as an American animated music group. Um, they were created by a chap called Ross Bagdasarian uh, all the way in 1958, so a long time ago now. Thanks, Aaron. Question number three. Who is the only singer to have had number ones in six consecutive decades? Somebody old. <laughs> I'll give you a clue. He likes to make calendars every year. It is Cliff Richard, that is the correct answer. Aaron? Yeah, well done with that, I was very perceptive. Um, Cliff Richard, uh, yeah, one of the most famous British singers of all time. He was actually born in India, uh, and his original name was Harry Roger Webb. Some trivia for you there. Thanks, Aaron. Question number four, who was the first man to fly over the Atlantic? It's a tricky one, any ideas? No? It was, in fact, Charles Lindbergh. Aaron? Um, yeah, Charles Lindbergh's journey was 3,600 miles long, uh, and he did it in a custom-built plane, which is called the Spirit of St. Louis. Thank you. St. Louis is a lovely place. Anyway, yes. on to the final question of the final round. For how many years was Churchill Prime Minister? Was it eight? It was not eight. Very close. Reluctant course mates? Nine? It's not nine, it was actually seven years and eight months. Aaron? Uh, yeah, Churchill's Prime Ministerial reign was a long one given uh, the Prime Ministers that we've had, but a lot of other Prime Ministers do actually beat him for aggregate years served in office. Uh, they include Harold Wilson, uh, Tony Blair, and the longest of all of them, Margaret Thatcher, which was 11 years. Thanks, Aaron. So we've come to the end of our round, so let's have the, the final scores. So the final scores are the reluctant housemates have a well-earned 40 points, but unfortunately the winners for today are the reluctant course mates with 45. Congratulations, reluctant course mates, and commiserations, reluctant housemates. Join us next week for another episode of Quiz. Goodbye.